From our home in native land, Toronto's newest pulp culture podcast, covering your favorite comics, collectibles, media, nerdific origin stories, and more. Hosted by your northern neighbor, Joey Pengelinen. Here it is, nerdos and nerdettes. Comics Welcome to another episode of Comics Inc. This is Joey, your host, along with Sorrel, Jeff, Leonard, and Kenya. And we have a very, very special guest again today. And if you're fans of Transformers and robots and the likes of these, we've got Danny G in the his house. What up, what up? So, um, tell us about Toy Travelers. Toy Travelers? <laughs> it's exactly what it sounds like. Yeah. Travel with toys. <laughs> pretty yeah. much. Pretty the toys much. who travel country to country. Pretty yeah, much. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah <laughs> man, definitely. Um, travel across Canada so far. Actually, I've been to the U.S. as well. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's exactly what it is. You know, going to uh, expos and kind of uh, showing off the Transformers and, um, you know, getting in, uh, involved with the communities, mm-hmm. right? And, uh, yeah, just kind of sharing... Buy, sell, trade, mm-hmm. um, yeah, and that kind of thing, you know. Very cool. That's the yeah. dream, I think. Working mm-hmm. expos all day long. Um, but the only thing that would really suck, though, is lugging all that stuff around. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely. did it a little bit today, and I was already like, I don't want to do this again. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, okay. uh, we, we wanted to, um, of course, tell our listeners a little bit about uh, the Transformers world. Kenya, he has a little history bit of that <laughs> yeah i guess i'm gonna be giving the lowdown on <laughs> no pressure but yeah, pressure. Uh, <laughs> yeah so again fun fact that i didn't actually know was transformers started out originally as toys yeah correct before becoming the tv series that we know and love um mm-hmm. so they they were in the 1980s um it was actually a japanese toy line by microman and D- Dial clone? Mm-hmm. Well, those are the, mm-hmm. the lines, but those it was actually Takara, okay. Takara Takara Tari that okay. actually mm-hmm. uh, designed the. So that's toys. the designer. He, I, I don't know my own. Oh, so we have a go to guy for it. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm here yeah. for. <laughs> Definitely. Um, but obviously, it was bought out by Hasbro. Right. The, mm. big, the big toy monopoly of yeah. the world. Um, and they saw a market in it for a television show right. to in order to market toys like that was the intention let's make tv to market toys which is really similar to what they did with gi joe and a bunch of their other other products right. mm-hmm. um there's a really great documentary on netflix about this oh my I'm god bl- it's so blanking. good to- what, what's it called again i'm blanking on oh the i got now. excited and then i forgot about it now again but <laughs> but yeah a really great documentary the toys we grew up with toys we grew up with or something like yeah, that on netflix they did. Right. Oh, it's so and good. so they haven't covered transformers yet i hope they do that i think that's season coming. two right yeah, season two, season two. i think they're gonna do that um but yeah so basically excited. what is the gist of transformers if you don't already know it's vehicles that turn into humanoid robots and they also have a ton of cool weapons Weapons. More right. than meets the eye. <laughs> <laughs> Always, yeah. man. So it was about the toys first, the story second. Um, it centered around, of course, our hero, Optimus Prime, mm-hmm. and the evil villain, Megatron. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a comic connection. So there was a four issue series that had guest stars with like Spider Man and yeah. a bunch of other characters. So it was a Marvel driven series. Mm-hmm. Um, and then eventually they baked out what the history was of these characters. So they came from a planet called Cyber. Tron, which mm-hmm. was at war with each other, the Autobots being the good guys, and then mm-hmm. the Decepticons. Being the Decepticons. Yeah, being right. deceptive, being mm-hmm. evil. <laughs> and um, that war eventually came to Earth, and it spawned all of the different TV series that we saw, and that's how like the human connection happened, because there's always like these human characters that mm-hmm. were friends with the Autobots that helped them fight. And I mean, most of us in this room here grew up with Beast Wars and Beast Machines, which was like the spin-off of the original Transformers where the Mm -hmm. characters weren't weren't really cars anymore. They were just animals Mm -hmm. that turned into robot people. Still pretty cool. (laughs) (laughs) Sentient beings. Sentient beings. Oh man. That terminology. (laughs) I like robot people. Anyways, um, but yeah, looking at the top ten, so I'm gonna list out the top characters. Everybody should recognize these names Mm -hmm. by now. Optimus. And then everybody has to imitate them in the table. Lenny, I'm yeah. looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can do two characters. Okay, so, so we've got Optimus I, I, Prime, 
Bumblebee, Megatron, Starscream, Soundwave, Ironhide, Grimlock, who's my favorite because mm-hmm. he's the little dinosaur, Jazz, Shockwave, and Galvatron. Very nice. Um, cool. And also, of course, we all know the movies made by Michael Bay. Right. Yeah. Which the Bayverse, of, we call. Yeah, the Bayverse, <laughs> which kick-started Transformers for like a whole new generation of young right. kids. So. I think I'm kind of happy about that. In the beginning, <laughs> yeah, it was uh, the yeah, first one. To be first honest, movie was yeah. terrible. No. Yeah, yeah, but like just everything after not. that, yeah. Well, that, uh, I feel like the way that they transform, you just can't toy that anymore. I don't know the no. way that they were doing it. It's like okay, little bits are like switching around. Yeah, even get... thirty-year-olds could swallow those now. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't how know man. That, <laughs> yeah, how do you feel about that? What the uh, safety the... factor, or, or or just like pretty much. The way that they turned um, like really transforming small. cars right. into just like something that like vaguely transforms, I can maybe imagine how that would turn from A to B. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't it, directly transform anymore. No. No, it's just like. Well, they did a lot of like ma- they call it mass shifting, right? So you know they could turn from like your cell phone to like you know being our size basically, if not bigger, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So they had this ability to do that. Maybe they had like um, Ray Palmer. Kind of do a crossover thing, and that's how that happened. See, that's, I only know DC, really. Cheating, really. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah, I, think, I think the thing is with the movies, though, they had to make it look more spectacular. Where right. I, when you think back to like the TV series, they were built on based off of the toys. Mm-hmm. Right. So the TV series had this, the way they transformed had the same limitations as the toys, right. which I think was also easier for the animators at the time. Mm-hmm. Whereas nowadays, with all the CG graphics and everything, no, you got to make it look it's, super cool and right. do anything, liquidy. Everything. All Almost, yeah. and like all sorts of effects. So it does change, I guess, the dynamics for that younger group that didn't grow up with the cartoons where mm-hmm. they see it they were, in a very different We were simple way. people. Like. We were. We were yeah. easier to please. Yeah, we were definitely <laughs> easier. Like, I'm 30. I'm still playing with Transformers right now, and I'm like, honey, you can do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but hey, yeah, let me know how you got into the business of robots and Transformers. So, you know, since we're talking about the movies, actually, um, I think it was 2000. What was it? Uh, 2011, Dark mm-hmm. of the Moon. That's mm-hmm. when Dark of the Moon came out, yeah. which was the third movie mm-hmm. uh, from the Bayverse. Yeah. And um, I don't know, I just literally, uh, eBay and Kijiji were like my best friends at the time. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I was making way too much money yeah. and I had way too much time, you know? And so I literally decided to start collecting toys and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it just became a hobby, right? And became a passion. Mm-hmm. And uh, first I started collecting movie stuff, mm-hmm. uh, just because of the movies, obviously, at the time. And then I realized, wait a second, I grew up in the 80s and there were like, you know, Generation 1 toys, right? Mm-hmm. And then I, I was starting to do some research and I found out there were like newer versions of the Generation 1 toys, which were the classic line, the Generation mm-hmm. line, right? Um, so and that kind of like sparked it all, right? And um, just buying and selling through Kijiji, mm-hmm. you know? And the, and word, the online the, business is really, really big for mm-hmm. like collectors. So. Oh, yeah, for oh sure. yeah, definitely. Um, you know, like I said, you can buy and sell, chat, and kind of, you know, create groups now, and mm-hmm. right? So. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool in that sense. And then you you go to expos as well, as I was saying. Right. Um, the last th- so we actually met in the Hilton event, right? Um, which was the um, that was the collector con, the event. collectors con, correct? So, uh, but you guys were probably the biggest representative in terms of Transformers, actually. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, we had a really good spot. Um, we made really good you friends. Guys got with a them. corner lot. Yes, <laughs> yeah. that's kind of our spot now. That we're that's our dedicated spot. Nice. So. You know, hopefully in future, maybe if you decide to do a show, of course, you know, we'll definitely well, hook we get you up. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll get Cornell out too. We could definitely talk about that, right? That was very cool. But um, yeah, so, and we just like to show off the toys. You know, we have nice displays, and like yeah. the people that come work at the booths are all fans, so it just mm-hmm. makes it a lot easier to bring in people and uh, mm-hmm. just have a good time, right? I also saw though, um, and we were talking about this um, when you first came in, but you guys have like a beautiful display case, right? And you said it collapses too. Correct. It's it's kind of like those. Um, you know those bands. You know they have their um, the display. They have those cases where they have their drums in there, mm-hmm. sound mm-hmm. stuff. And so it's kind of like that, right? Yeah, um, you gotta. I mean, I guess you gotta invest money on the equipment to actually go through with these shows because you need to protect toys that are worth hundreds of dollars. Right. You know, you need to make them look good, but exactly. you need to still be able to transport them. Tell mm-hmm. tell yeah. us how that's like, like from the morning of or the night of. You know, preparing until you're finally set. Yeah, so, you know, because I've been doing this for a while, mm-hmm. um, now I know kind of the the process, you mm-hmm. know. So, for one, I can't do it by myself. 
So I always oh, try to find sure. a group of people that are interested in the same things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we just kind of do it together, right? Mm -hmm. um, with regards to that display case, um, the first time I, I have it, had it, uh, you know, it definitely took me a few hours to put together. Yeah, I could But now that. I can literally do it in like 15 minutes. So That's amazing. Yeah. I used to be a recruiter for a college, and uh, we had this like stand-up. It's like a pop-up banner. Right. And uh, from my understanding, they said it was a pop-up banner. So I'm thinking it's going to... Pop just up. pop up. <laughs> and then I get Magic. there and I just see these grade sevens and eights walking by my booth and they're just kind of like, so uh, are you going to put your banner up? <laughs> and it's not, it's, it's never easy the day of, yeah. you know, there's always, uh, there's always something happening that you didn't expect for it to happen. Definitely. But um, you have a lot of boxes, like there were a lot of toys in your booth. Right. It, it was a collective. Because um, now what we're doing is we're actually inviting other collectors to mm -hmm come in on the, mm -hmm. uh, the booths, right? Kind of share their collectibles and, uh, you know, their passions and whatnot. Yeah. And so it just, it makes things a lot easier when, yeah. you know, you're working with like-minded people, mm -hmm. right? Well, we're um, certainly there to, to volunteer our time whenever no, that time comes. So. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, definitely. Sure. Um, you know, we got the expo booked and stuff mm -hmm. like that, so we could definitely talk about that, right? Cool. Um, and um, what kind of events uh, are you guys going to be in soon? So, uh, the next one coming up is the uh, 80s Expo. 80s Toy Expo. Correct. Yeah, yeah. And that's mm -hmm. April 15th. Very nice. It's just a one-dayer, but uh, it's going to be at the Hilton, right? I think it's... Yeah. Do you prefer um, Do you prefer those kinds of expos where you're there for one day or like the whole three days? Mm -hmm. I prefer to be there for a longer time, I guess, in a mm -hmm. sense, because you put in the same amount of work. Yeah, in terms yeah, of setting sort of, up and, and tearing down, right? Yeah. So to do the same kind of work for one day and mm -hmm. versus do it for like a week, like at an expo or something. Yeah. Right? Um, but at the same time, it's uh, how you say, it's more warm and kind of like those one day air shows, you get more mm -hmm. of the uh, concentrated collectors. And That's stuff, true, right? yeah. Because they know it's just for one day and then they're going to target what they need to get and then they're going to go there. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, definitely it's a lot more interesting in, in that sense, right? Mm. And how would you, you guys have been to like larger Comic Cons and fan expos, right? Right. How do you compare that scene to a smaller con like the, the 80s collectors? And so definitely you, you get a more of a mixed crowd. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You get a lot of people that uh, are not so much in, into the things that you're into. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it gives you a chance to kind of showcase, right? Mm -hmm. And get those people that are, are not necessarily involved, involved, right? Mm -hmm. So, for example, like we did last year's Fan Expo, mm -hmm. um, I had brought some toys um, that were like five, six years old. I had mm -hmm. them on display, um, but people were like, I've never seen this thing before. Mm -hmm. I was actually selling like four or $500 toys that people have never collected anything in their life. Wow. Right? Wow. Meanwhile, That's... these toys have been out forever, and we're like, yeah, this is yeah. the first time we've ever seen them. Yeah, right? yeah. So, the cool thing is that there's a huge market, an un untapped market, yeah. right, yeah. that I'm, you know, we're working on kind of trying to get to, right? Yeah. So. To be honest, really, like, I, I've been in the scene for a little bit of time, but as, you know, a customer, right. um, I'm seeing I'm seeing Transformer stuff. I'm seeing robots, but I'm finding a decline a little bit, you know? And it's I so really true. hope that that's not the case, you know, for, for the world of, of robots, because, um, you know, even, even comic book stores that used to do, like, you know, they sell comics on the one side, and then they would sell, like, hobbies on the other right. side. So it's almost like a half comic book store, half right. games workshop, and I'm seeing it dwindle down. It's it's true, definitely. Um, the more of the Transformers than anything, mm -hmm. um, it is dying down a bit, mm -hmm. um, just because the people that were into Transformers are, are our age, mm -hmm. if not older. And we have mortgages to pay right? now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly that's right. just all my robots. Yeah. <laughs> and the yeah. toys are not getting cheaper. Yeah. So that's that's no, the problem, no. right? Yeah. So for one, you know, people don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on a, an action figure, mm -hmm. you know, because it doesn't do anything for you after the fact, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it looks cool yeah, on the shelf. Yeah, yeah, that's it. But yeah. you know, that's it, right? So uh, I'm you, hoping to change you, that. What do you think is going to reboot it for like the world, though? I think like sharing more movies. Uh, move definitely yeah. movies. Yeah, definitely like um, the movies. You know, media. Yeah. Right. It it definitely needs more media. Is what I think. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, it needs to be showcased to, to people that um, were maybe have grew, grew, grown up with it, mm -hmm. but they kind of gotten out of it, or mm -hmm. it just kind of 
to Fated. revive it somehow. Yeah. Correct. You got do it. Do a do a crisis on multiple Earths transformation. <laughs> 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 I don't know how we're gonna do that. Um, or, 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 you know, <laughs> don't 